Will this universe end? And if so, how? There are two theories, neither pleasant. The Big Crunch says all things will rush inward and squash together. And the death of heat says all things will fly apart and evaporate. But startling challenges put it all up for grabs. The key question is the amount of matter in the universe. Are there enough galaxies, stars, planets, gas, dark matter, strange particles, for gravity to ultimately cause the big crunch? And if this universe ends, are others already in existence? Perhaps an infinite number of them. Next, on Closer to Truth, will this universe ever end? Welcome to Closer to Truth. I'm Robert Kuhn. There's a lot loaded into our question, will this universe ever end? From the structure of this universe to the existence of multiple universes. There aren't too many people who get paid to ponder the end of all things. Fortunately, we've gathered some of the best. Dr. Leon Letterman is a Nobel laureate in physics and author of The God Particle. Dr. Frank Tipler, is professor of mathematics at Tulane and author of The Physics of Immortality. Dr. Nancy Murphy, professor at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California, seeks harmony between science and religion. Dr. Wendy Friedman, an astronomer at the Carnegie Observatories, also in Pasadena, provided key data for determining the age of the universe. And Dr. Andre Linde, professor of physics at Stanford, developed the startling vision how chaotic inflation creates new universes. Leon, uh, looking broadly, uh, what are the kinds of questions about the end of the universe that you would want high school students to think about? Uh, I'm a non-cosmologist. I'm the token non-cosmologist. <laughs> and uh, We have to have diversity. We have to have diversity. I think the contemplating it is already something that would be interesting to high school students who uh, are obsessed with the present. Uh, not so concerned about the future. Uh, so I think that to uh, awaken them to the, some of these issues, which are very interesting, they're fascinating. You know, the universe began with a big bang. Will it end with a whimper? Uh, the universe, uh, somebody told us, was uh, 50 billion years old. And uh, a listener said, how many years? And he said, 50 billion. Oh, thank God, I thought you said million. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> I, th uh, I sure would, I'd sort of like to be around and see what happens. Uh, Frank, you're a theoretical physicist whose book, The Physics of Immortality, uh, claims uh, amidst much controversy that the omega point, which you will define for us later, is, is God, uh, and that everyone will somehow be resurrected in this final last moment. Um, why should we believe this? Uh, why should I like it? And uh, give me a quick answer, and we'll get back to you later. Well, the reason you should believe it is because it's the only alternative allowed by the firmly tested laws of physics, which I hope to explain in some detail okay, but later But why should on. I like it? Because you'll be brought back into existence near the end of time, and you will exist forever um, before the big crunch actually occurs, before the very end of time, which is the omega point. But that ever is, uh, is a creation of... Of physics. That's not. That's really a very small fraction of a second, but it will, well, it will we feel like forever. Is that It'll feel like forever in a more reasonable time scale. Right. Second is a concept that arose in our present environment on Earth. A far more reasonable time scale is experienced time, and there will be an infinite amount of experienced time between however close you are to the end of time and the actual end of time. Okay, we'll, we'll explore that. Nancy, uh, you are a Christian theologian who is not threatened by all these cosmologists. Uh, are these discussions at the end of the universe based on physics and cosmology uh, important for people who believe in the Judeo-Christian ethic as, as uh, expressed in the Bible? I think they're important, but more for negative rather than positive reasons. When uh, Christians talk about the end of the world uh, or talk about last things, talk about what comes last, what they're intending to talk about is what happens after the phase of history is over that this universe belongs to. 
uh, essentially after the end of physics. And so anything that physicists could predict about how this universe is going to close down is, in a sense, irrelevant to what Christians are talking about in terms of last things. The phrase, the new heavens and the new earth, uh, that's right. th that would take place after That's right. There's expected, Frank's there's, whatever. That's right. I'll there's supposed here. to be continuity. That is, I am still I in some sense when I'm resurrected afterwards. Mm -hmm. But the afterwards is after whatever these folks can talk about. Uh, but another point uh, uh, where I would say that there's negative significance is if in the colorful terms that are sometimes used, if the um, prospects for the physical universe are freeze or fry, then that's motivation <laughs> for asking, is there some sort of hope for human life beyond either of those scenarios? Uh, Wendy, I want to get back to some, some hard data here. What are the kinds of observations that you are doing uh, could lend itself to, to help us understand what will happen at the end of all things? Well, there are several things you need to understand if you're going to address this question of sure. what is the ultimate fate of the universe. And uh, in context of uh, the expansion of the universe, we can measure how fast is the universe expanding, and we need to know how much matter there is in the universe. Mm -hmm. Those are two very active areas of investigation. And we need to know how much matter there is because depending on how much there is, the expansion could be slowed down. By gravity. By gravity, the, that's right. The more, more matter, the more gravity. That's right. Slow down. And then there's another question, which I'm sure we'll get to later, a question as to whether the universe is in fact accelerating. Great. Uh, Andre, from your work, uh, what are the implications for the end of the universe as is traditionally uh, thought? Well, it seems that the answer to this question may be not quite trivial, because usually people think that the universe everywhere is the same as we see it uh, yeah. in our vicinity. Right. So the question about the future of the universe, you can once and forever uh, answer by looking at our part of the universe. But inflationary theory says that most probably the uh, universe consists of many different parts, and some of them are still in the process of being uh, created right now, and a uh, new life uh, appears in different parts of the universe all over again. So our part of the universe may collapse or may uh, become cold and unsuitable for existence of life, but simultaneously other parts of the universe will appear which will be able to support life. So, so what you're saying is that I pose two possibilities that all crunch together and all fly apart, but you're saying e e in either event, there still may be other universes or the parts of the totality of reality in which right. things can happen. Yeah, this is similar to the, in general, uh, to the question whether each of us is mortal and whether uh, humanity is mortal or immortal. Because each of us is going to die, but nevertheless our children will give rise to uh, their children and humanity as a whole may exist forever. So the universe, it's our like part, person. our part of the universe probably will either decay or, I mean, either collapse or become cold and you know, unsuitable for life, but there will be other parts of the universe where life may appear again. Is that encouraging? <laughs> oh, well, it depends on the personal perspective. <laughs> if you want to have a personal immortality, I'm afraid that science does not allow us uh, this so far. I'm not quite sure about but Omega But even lines. in your theory, our particular civilization and our particular lines of descent would become extinct. Yes, most probably so. There's a metaphor I'd like the high school students to, uh, to know about. Uh, in the simplest case of the Big Bang Theory and whether the universe expands forever or doesn't, the metaphor is launching a rocket. In fact, the mathematics is very similar to the mathematics of, uh, of the uh, future of the universe. Uh, if you launch a rocket with, uh, on, on an on a austere budget uh, of NASA's uh, impecunious state, it might go up for a while and then it'll fall back. That's sort of the big crunch. Sometimes that happens with a big budget, too. Even with a big budget, <laughs> yeah. Because a, of gravity. Oops, oops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 